Hello there guys, welcome back to EOS Acro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and we are continuing from our previous base composite video and in this one we are going to make the cube cast shadows onto our table. So let's get started. Now let me switch over to the scene view and here I'll create a simple sphere and let me move it off to the side a little and to this side so I can actually see it from my camera. So this is my sphere. If I switch over to render view, you can actually see the cube is casting shadows onto my sphere. And if I actually try to move the sphere around, if I just move it a little, you can see the shadows move and I'm also even getting the corner of the cube on top of the sphere. So basically, I'm getting the shadow of this cube on other 3D objects. Let me stop the rendering. I'm getting the shadow of the cube on other 3D objects but not on my actual grid plane because the grid is just a stand-in object. If I want to get the shadow of this, uh, this object on the table, I need to also have an object which represents the table in my 3D scene. The easiest way to do that, let me just switch over to the camera, uh, control click on the grid. So this grid is going to now represent my actual table. But as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap left out on all these sides. So I'll jump into the grid and just extend it so that it covers my entire scene for now. So now that I have this uh, grid set up, I can switch over to the render view. And if I hit render this time, you will see that the shadows of this particular cube are actually falling on the grid. And now, of course, because the grid doesn't actually know it's supposed to just capture shadows, we have lost our background. Now to get my background back, I need to tell the renderer that I only need the shadows falling on this plane but not the actual plane itself. So to do this, I can just use a material which comes inbuilt uh, in Houdini out of the box. So coming down here under utilities, I have a material called shadow mat. I can just drag and drop it onto the plane right here in render view and it'll get assigned. So if I drag and drop this material, Immediately you'll see the entire view goes black and it looks like my whole scene is destroyed basically. But it's not really. So if I just come back to my scene view, let me just pull the grid out a little bit so it's not covering the whole scene and come back to render view. You can see only the portions covered by the grid are the ones where the background is gone. It's kind of counterintuitive for now, but what you're actually getting is in the alpha channel. If I switch over you can see that the shadows actually exist on the grid and where the grid stops, the shadows stop. So the actual background we are getting here in the scene is the problem. The reason we are getting the shadow is because it is set as a camera background. As counter as it seems, this is something we don't want. So I want to just go to my camera first and here under view, if I scroll down, uh, you can see I have an option called enable background image. This background image has nothing to do with the background image we needed in our scene view. So I can just turn this enable background image off and immediately in my render view, the image is gone. So you can see this enable just only works with the camera background for the rendering. It does not work for the actual scene view. So this just gets added in when you set it up in the display options. So now once we have this, I go over to my shadows and I can see it's getting cut. Obviously I don't want it to be cut. So coming back into my scene view, onto my grid plane, I'll go increase it to cover my entire scene. Make sure that when you're creating objects which are covering the environment, they cover as much of the scene frame as possible so you don't get sudden cuts in your shadows. Now, I have my Rubik's Cube and I have shadows. The problem now is I don't have the background anymore. I need to tell the renderer that I need to use the background. The way to do this would be to go into the display options for the render view. There are the display options here is right at the top. And here, if I go into the background section, I can select a file which I want to be the background. I'll go use a cup picker and use the same file I've used in my original background. I'll hit apply and immediately you can see I have a background image and I have shadows falling on that same image. So pretty much this looks like it's almost done, but there is a slight change we can do in the renderer to make this look a little bit more better than it does right now. So let's do that and wrap up with this tutorial. 
Now, as you can see on this particular cube, here on these sections, the holes look a bit too dark. They look like there is not enough light in the scene, whereas we know this light in the scene is way more than enough to light up this cube. So to get these kinds of details, there are two things I want to do. I first want to add an environment light, so there's light coming in from all directions, and then I want to change the kind of renderer I'm using. So let me stop the rendering which is going on now. I'll save this snapshot as the IPR render. And now switching over to my scene view, I'll go ahead and create an environment light. I'll just control click on this because no matter what it is going to get created in the origin. This is a light which goes across all the way in my scene. It's like a sphere which is casting light. Now one thing I want to do is change it to clip to positive hemisphere. Another thing you'll note is that it does not have any attenuation options because it automatically attenuates the right way. Next, uh, I want to make sure the light intensity is correct. For this, I need to make sure I'm in the render view rendering to see if the intensity is correct. So let me hit render and I need to observe the brightness of my cube and the brightness of shadows. As you can see, the brightness looks okay. It makes the cube stand out a little bit more. I want the cube to have a bit more warmer tone, so I'll just add in a little bit more color into this light. And now finally, to get the final output, I should not be using the Mantra IPR node. I should be using a PBR node. So for this, I need to switch over from the object context here to the output context. Output section is basically concerned with sending things out of Houdini. So here I have the Mantra IPR node. This was created by default when I hit render for the first time. I'll go ahead delete this. As you can see now the renderer selection here in the render view is gone. I need to create a Mantra PBR node. I could have just used the same Mantra node but it's easier if I just go to render menu create render node and select Mantra PBR. The PBR here stands for physically based rendering which makes the entire rendering look a little bit more realistic. And this time I'll go into the render section here. Under limits I'll increase the diffuse limit to be around 3. This makes sure that I have enough lighting in my whole scene. So once I've set this all up I'll go ahead re-hit render here when you can see here that Mantra 1 node is selected. So it goes ahead and starts rendering. You can see it takes a little bit more time to render this time than it did before, mainly because of the indirect lighting it's calculating and also the environment light. So now that it has finished rendering, we can compare the previous and this render to see all the differences. If I just click on the plus or minus button, you can see the differences. First you can see the cube is a lot lighter and also the holes of these cubes have a lot more light passing through them. Not only that, if you observe the actual table itself, it looks like it has a bit more shadow being cast by a lot of other places and it makes the cube look like it's actually it actually might be sitting on the tabletop. Uh, obviously this is not the uh, perfect uh, photorealistic render. We are going to still work through and uh, understand a lot more different concepts, get a lot of reflections on the table, get a bit more proper indirect lighting and another major thing, get proper shadows in our lighting because we know we have colored lights, we should have colored shadows whereas the shadows are black which makes for the whole thing to look a little bit more CGI. So we'll address all these issues in the next couple of videos. So till then I hope you guys have found this tutorial useful. If you have any doubts, critics or suggestions they're all welcome in the comment section below the video and I've also linked a special form in the description which you can fill out so that I could make a tutorial based on any of the doubts you actually want to learn about. So that's it for this. I hope to see you guys in the next video.